hey, check it out. Uh, I thought I'd uh, post this for the folks that are not uh, patrons yet. Uh, if you go to Google Maps and put in uh, Marina State Beach in California and then convert over to the satellite view, you will see a minor miracle just by happenstance. I had the glider out and assembled at Marina Beach when the satellite went over and took a picture. And you get to see my wing in the takeoff area. Uh, and I think the most interesting part of the uh, photo is the fact that there's a standard hang glider in front of me. And the juxtaposition between my glider and a standard hang glider is shocking even to me. It's like, holy smokers, look at that aspect ratio. Uh, anyway, I just thought this was a, uh, a pretty cool happenstance. And over to the side, you can see my truck with a trailer taking up two parking places with all my gear for testing the glider. And I just thought that was something uh, fun and interesting to take a look at. So if you have a chance, go over to Google Maps, check it out. And here we go with the video. Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Uh, I thought I'd take a few minutes today to bring you up to date. It's what's going on with the wing. Um, as part of this video, I'm going to talk about some cool material I found uh, that I'm not sure what to do with, but you guys might have some ideas. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in the video. Let me put that down to the side here. And uh, I'm going to bring you up to date as to the work that I've done on the wing recently. Um, some of you may be aware that I was planning on uh, uh, taking it out to test the new Elevon configuration. As you know, I've expanded the Elevons uh, out to the wingtips, and they're considerably wider. We have much larger Elevon area now. It has been tested, uh, pseudo-tested. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description below of the previous tests that were done with uh, a foam core extensions. And then I made the modification to the wing itself. Uh, and we went out and we tested the flow conditions with just the left wing and the left wing tip, uh, but the all up configuration has not been tested. Uh, in other words, what's the sensitivity of the controls? What is the wing handle like now? I don't know precisly. I have a feeling for it. It's, it, it's pretty good, I think. Uh, but I went out recently to try to confirm that. Uh, went to Marina Beach, wind was blowing about 15, and we started putting the wing together. And darned if I could not get the right wing tip assembled with the main wing panel. That's this area here. Uh, the winglet mount, the wing tip, and the main wing panel would not go together. Uh, it was off by about a 32nd of an inch or so on fitting in, uh, getting these holes to line up to put the pin in, which was very perplexing because I've had the wing together many times. Now, I did make a number of modifications in order to extend the Elevon. And I just couldn't figure out why it wouldn't go together. Plus, when I made those modifications, the wing was actually assembled here in my shop. So it's like, wow, I had it assembled to make the modifications, and now it absolutely will not go together. Uh, and the only thing I could think was, gee, I must have made a modification after I did the fit check. Uh, but given my advanced age, I couldn't remember what the modification was or what I had done post-fit check. Of course, in the engineering world, it's a really dumb thing to do. You do a fit check, then you make some kind of change to the structure and never go back and check it. Uh, that's called hubris, I think. Uh, anyway, so it came back to bite me and the parts went to go together and we struggled for hours and finally had to give up and go home and we never got the testing done. So when I got back, I figured out what had gone wrong. Um, in the uh, wing tip, and here, right here, and if you can see it out here, the wingtip panel, uh, there are hinge pins here that the elevons rotate around. These are a little stainless steel pieces of tubing, and they're, they're, they have a stop on them to keep them from going too far in, which is a cotter uh, pin here that's folded over. That keeps them from going further in, and to keep them from walking out, uh, during flight, you know, as this goes up and down, a pin could walk out of position. I use stops. And inside the winglet mount, there's two pieces of plywood here on the inside that act as stops to keep this pin and this pin from walking out uh, during use of the elevons during flight. 
Now this one's covered up with some tape. I, I put this vinyl tape on here to keep it from vibrating out during transportation. And I'll do the same thing over here. I left it off over here so that you could see it in the video. Um, and what I had done is on the inside, I had this piece of plywood already glued in place. That's a stop for this one. Uh, but there was no stop on the outer side because the it, this didn't have elevons before. So I built the elevons and put in the hinge pin and all that. And then I went in and glued in the plywood right here to act as a stop. And I glued it in the same way as I had done on this side. <laughs> However, it appears that the foam that this is made of on the inside was a little bit thinner on this side than on this side. And this pin actually was jamming up against the piece of plywood and wouldn't let the wing tip come on far enough to get the pinholes to line up. So, and I had not put in this stop until after I'd done the fit check. Oh, do the fit check, glue the stop in the same way as I have on the other side. No big deal. Well, yeah, who, who, who would have thought that that styrofoam would be just a slight, slightly different in thickness? But that's why you do fit checks last. Uh, lesson learned. So I had to go back in here and put in little standoffs and drop that stop a little further down in here to give clearance for this assembly to drop in here and not run into anything yet be close enough so that the pin can't walk all the way out. This, these pins are relatively long. They go in here two, three inches. And uh, this is only about three quarters of an inch deep. So it can't walk out very far uh, and the stop will work just fine. So uh, there we go, lesson learned. Uh, wasted it a whole day and didn't get the testing done. However, it gave me a chance to come back to the shop here and, and do a lot of touch-up work on the wing. Now, if you've been following with, you know it's been a couple of years uh, since I finished the wing, and I thought this darn thing was going to fly just swell uh, right off the board because my first wing had, but this one's been a lot more problematic. I took a lot of uh, risks with the aerodynamics, trying new things. And it has come back to bite me a little bit. There's been a lot of changes. I've changed the pilot's cage position. I've changed my hang position. I've changed the setup of the pilot's cage to be rigid tubing instead of half supported by cables. And I've now changed the elevons. And there's been a bunch of minor changes. It's been through three control stick uh, setups. So a lot of changes and it has taken some time. Well, through all that time, we put the wing together, transport it, take it apart, together apart, together apart, transport, transport, a lot of wear and tear on the wing, way more than you'd get from a configuration that has been tested and you're just taking it out to fly it. This thing's been put together so many times, a lifetime worth of assembly, disassembly. And in the process, it has gotten scuffed up and so forth. And I've gone around and made those fixes and discovered some stuff along the way, such as right back here. This is the edge of the rear spar for the elevon, right back in here. And this wing goes upside down on the bottom on the trailer. Now, the bottom of the trailer is covered with uh, indoor-outdoor carpeting to help protect the wing. But in sliding the wing in and out, there is abrasion that was occurring here. And uh, the, the rear spar here has uh, a bit of a sharp edge on it. I should have rounded it off with sandpaper, smoothed it up, but I... I, it never dawned on me, a little bit of a sharp edge, rubbing on the carpet, and it was abrading through the fabric here. And so I put a patch on that and doubled up on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a sleeve out of uh, a boat fabric, boat cover fabric, uh, real heavy-duty stuff. Uh, and I'll have a sleeve that goes on the end of the wing here that will protect this fabric from getting scuffed. Uh, so a, a little added extra. And then there's been things that, uh, as you know, I had a little saying uh, called Gen on this project. Stands for good enough for now. Um, and on prototype aircraft like this, it's quite wise, I think, to, to do Gen. Uh, because otherwise you make things absolutely perfect. You get it all set up. It's wonderful. Yet somehow when you get to the field, it's wrong. Uh, and you end up having to undo it all. Uh, so... I do things pretty much down and dirty and good enough for now. Uh, and then I test those out. And once things are sorted out, then I make it a more permanent uh, design or construction. Now, on this aircraft, I thought, oh, well, 
we're going to take it out. We're going to do a couple of test hops with it. Everything will be fine. Then I'll go back and I'll take care of all those little gen things and upgrade them. <laughs> it didn't work out that way, did it? Uh, there's been a lot of work to get up to uh, flight ready or extended flight ready. As you know, we've had a few hops with it. Anyway, uh, so while I've been back in the shop here, I had a chance to pick up on some of these things and making these, uh, turning the gen into a more permanent thing. And you're thinking, well, gee, how do you know it's really ready to fly? But uh, based on the testing that I've done in the new Elevance, I think the configuration is now going to be good to go. And I think this summer we're going to see some pretty interesting flights with it. Uh, we're getting ready to go back to El Mirage. They finally opened up the lake bed just last week. Uh, it's dried out and it's open for usage. Uh, so we can pack this thing up in the trailer and get back down there to El Mirage and, and do uh, uh, what I hope are some more significant flights with it. We get a little bit more altitude, a little bit more time. We get some turns in, uh, what have you. We begin to expand the flight envelope on it. Uh, one of the things that I did here in the process, there's a pin here in the inboard Elevon now, and this is the drive pin for the outboard Elevon. Slips into a little piece of tubing. And what I'd had before is that this leading edge tube, these uh, attachment pin uh, fittings, and this fitting were all lined up here. And you basically had to get one, two, three, four items lined up simultaneously, and it was just, it was really hard. And then with the Elevon being loose and moving up and down while you're trying to do the assembly, oh my goodness, it was next to impossible. And you go out in a 10 or 15 mile an hour wind, and then uh, if you don't have two people doing it, you're, you're not going to get it put together. So what I did is I cut this uh, uh, drive shaft a, a little bit shorter. So actually... This area lines up first, and, and you're getting halfway on and partially lined up, and then this engages uh, with the tube on the other side, and much easier. You know, it's like, get this lined up, fiddle with the Elevon just a little bit, and boom, she drops on, and everything's fine then. Now, uh, the, it, one of the guys that have gotten beat up a lot in the testing is the winglet mounts. And these things have been broken and beat up and banged around. They're extremely lightweight. Uh, I had originally made them out of light ply, which was way too heavy. And I cut a pound and a half out of the weight of the glider by making them out of uh, foam. The, this uh, I made them out of Dow XPS, ex, uh, extruded polystyrene, uh, half inch thick with one layer of a three ounce fiberglass over the outside. Very light, but not incredibly durable. It's plenty strong enough, but very susceptible to getting banged up. Well, you may or may not be aware, I'm in the process of building a new set of uh, outboard wingtip panels uh, that don't have any dihedral in them. Uh, the dihedral that I have in here was done for ground clearance purposes and uh, it's not helpful on the aerodynamics. It actually increases the adverse yaw, which we don't want. Uh, so I'm building another set of uh, wingtip panels uh, with the extended Elevon on them uh, that have no dihedral in them. And that requires that I, uh, I, I would have modified these if I thought it was possible, but the dihedral is actually in these fittings, in the attachment fittings and how they're mounted on the spar. And if I wanted to salvage these uh, panels, I would have had to cut this whole root end open and carefully grind away these fittings without wrecking the spar and put new ones on. And I just thought that was too risky. And if I cut this up, well, then I don't have any wingtip panels anymore of any kind to use. And if I have problems with the new ones, well, then, then I got nothing. So I figured I'd save these and make all new ones. I, I had enough material on hand I can do that. So those are in process, and in the process of doing that, I'm going to go ahead and make new uh, uh, winglet mounts because, first of all, this wheel, the wingtip wheel, is no longer going to be here on the winglet mount. It's going to go out to the wingtip because with no dihedral, the wingtips are going to touch first when it tilts sideways. So i got to move the wingtip wheels out to the wingtips, beef up the spar a little bit, extra couple of little strips of uh, carbon fiber, poultry to carbon fiber, to make the spar strong enough to take the impact loads of the wheel hitting the ground. Uh, but I'll have a chance to build a new set of these. And I, I've been thinking about how I'm going to build them. And I think I've decided, I'm fairly certain, that I'm going to use sandwich panels. Uh, this is uh, 332nd inch uh, 
Eric foam. This might have been Divinacel, but Eric same thing. A PVC foam, three thirty seconds of an inch thick. And on one side I have the Technora scrim cloth, and on the other side I have uh, one layer of uh, three ounce fiberglass, one twenty weave. And uh, this will be the side, uh, the sides, the the vertical portions will be made out of the sandwich panels. Uh, except I'm probably going to do Kevlar. Uh, one layer of uh, 1.8 ounce Kevlar, and I might put on uh, an extra layer of one ounce fiberglass uh, just to give it some dent resistance. And I'll make the two sides out of that. And then uh, because I want to have some rounded off corners here, especially on the bottom, when you glue two of these panels together, you can't exactly come in and sand them off. You could put a triangle piece on the inside and round them off but then you're going to have exposed foam and all that. So I'll make them undersize, th th that these will be a little bit smaller here. And then I'll put on a cap of soft balsa, six pounds, something like that. And that cap will actually be the part that's rounded off, got the nice curves on it. I'll do the same thing up front. I'll do a block of balsa up here. So we'll have nice, strong side panels, durable, strong side panels of composite material. And the tops and bottoms will be balsa, except for where I need extra strength, like right here where the winglet goes in, there'll be a piece of plywood here. And uh, where we have the big gap up front uh, for the attachment fittings to come in, there'll be plywood across the top, which is what it is now. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but I got plywood in here and I have plywood on the bottom and I'll do the same thing on the new ones. Uh, but that'll give me a chance to upgrade these and make versions of these that are almost as lightweight, but more durable. And, and I'll get a chance to do this correctly, the pass through for the shaft that drives the outer elevons. I, I had to cut some slots in here for that and I'll be able to embed uh, plywood uh, more efficiently in here to give some strength around here. Um, I'll probably just put a, a layer of uh, 132nd inch plywood on the inside. Uh, the outside being uh, Kevlar will be fine the way that it is. So um, th that's an opportunity for uh, some upgrades. I like to look at these things as opportunities as opposed to drudgery work of do it over again. Uh, it's an opportunity to make it a little bit better. So that's where we're headed. Uh, the wing is ready to fly right now. I'm going to do a couple more of the gen upgrades on the left wing. Right wing is done. In a couple of days here, uh, I'll be ready to go. And when I have crew available and the weather looks good, we'll get on down to El Mirage and we're going to give this baby uh, another go. Uh, unfortunately, we have to go back with all of the changes to the aerodynamics. We've got to go back and redo all of the taxi tests and all the incremental buildup to flying. Uh, and hopefully we, I managed to keep the whole thing in one piece while we get redo those incremental tests, make sure she still taxis okay and I can lift up the nose and the stick's not too sensitive in pitch and all of that stuff uh, before I go and lift it off the ground and try any more flights. Uh, so keep your fingers crossed. So now let me get back to that material uh, I, I pointed out at the beginning of the video. Let me bring up some stuff here. Uh, my wife accidentally introduced me to this. Uh, my wife's a TK teacher, and she uses this with uh, the kids in her class. And this is a modeling clay that's extremely lightweight. And I, and I looked all over online for formulation of this stuff, uh, and it seems to be somewhat proprietary. It comes sealed in little plastic things like this, or you can get a tub of it. For kids, it comes in colors. You can get it uh, in white. And uh, it's easily moldable like this. You can make any shape you want. Um, it, there is a water base in this, so it air dries. And it air dries into um, an extremely lightweight foam. Um, it is somewhat rubbery. It has some rubber base in it. And I was curious, can you glue to it? You know, being rubber, can you glue to it? I was like, yeah, you can. I glued this popsicle stick, popsicle stick on here with uh, Gorilla Glue or a urethane glue. And, man, it sticks to it like gangbusters. In fact, the bond is stronger than the underlying material. Uh, if you go to pull them apart, well, the foam is going to break first. And I thought, you know, this could be dandy filler somewhere, you know, where we normally would use micro balloons mixed with epoxy or where we might use the extra lightweight spackle filler. Well, here's something I can actually mold to a specific shape. Um, and then I tried wetting it 
wetting my finger, and you can smooth it out really nice. You wet your finger, you smooth this out. You can make just about any shape you want. You make some very nice fillets with this. And if this is filler material, and you're going to put fiberglass over it, well, that could be great. Now, I haven't tried bonding epoxy to this, but there's no reason why you couldn't put down a thin layer of urethane glue first and then epoxy over that. That'd work. And uh, so I, I set up some of this stuff, and then I uh, let it dry, and I measured its weight. It's nine pounds per cubic foot, approximately. Probably runs like eight to ten. Now, that's light balsa. So that's like taking a lightweight stick of balsa, triangle piece or something like that, and gluing it in a corner and shaping that and using that as a core material for putting composites over it. Yet, this can be shaped to any shape. You could stuff it in somewhere. And I'm thinking of using this in the new outer wingtip panels. Remember, in the trailing edge, I have the top and bottom pieces of trailing edge. And I cut all these little pieces of foam to go in at the front of the trailing edge to keep them from squishing together like this. Uh, and I'm thinking, I might use this stuff this time around. Um might be slightly heavier than the foam, but a lot quicker to work with, you know, because I can just roll some of it up and stuff it in there, go really fast. Uh, and then, you know, give it a little coat of urethane glue. It's probably good to go. You can also mold it. Any any shape plastic mold that you would have, you can uh, press it in into the mold and it will take that shape and dry that way. Uh, there is some issue of getting air pockets on the backside, getting this to completely fill in smooth, uh, but I'm sure with enough fiddling and working, you can deal with that issue. So you, you can mold it this way. Comes in, let's see, this, it's not only called air dry modeling clay, many different versions of it on Amazon, inexpensive, relatively speaking. Uh, and you can get tubs of the stuff that are just white. You know, you don't have to buy the kids version. Um, so, hey, pick some up, play with it. See what you can do with it, and if you got any, or maybe you've already used it. You found some cool uses for it. I haven't totally tested it out. I haven't totally characterized it, but I thought that's kind of a unique material, and I might be able to use it for something that's really light um, and easy to shape. So give it a go if you haven't already. If you have any good ideas or you've actually used it in unique ways, let us know. The one thing it doesn't do really well is sand. Uh, it's kind of rubbery, kind of bouncy. And when you go to sand it, it kind of rolls up and so forth. Cuts really nice with a razor blade, though. Anyway, so there you go. Something new to play around with. I don't know how long it's been on the market. It's probably been on the market forever, and I just didn't know about it. Um, and maybe somebody out there has found, in the modeling world, has found good use for it. And it is it has very good compressive strength when it's dry. Uh, it, so it has some very interesting properties that we might be able to make use of. So that's where we are currently. Thanks for coming and watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, learned something new. And I hope I have you up to date as to what's going on. And as I always say, until next time, fly safe and bye for now.